Officials have canceled nearly all public fireworks displays scheduled for this evening across Los Angeles County, as well as closing area beaches over this 4th of July weekend in a response to the recent COVID-19 surge. Yesterday's 3,187 new cases eclipsed the previous daily record reported just last Monday. With a number of Black Lives Matter rallies scheduled to take place this weekend across the Southland and the proliferation of illegal fireworks being set off, police and local officials are urging the public to stay safe and be smart. I'm Janora Lee for Channel 3. stupid you know i was a little bummed that we're not going to get to see the dodger stadium show tonight i mean we can see it perfectly from here but on the plus side it looks like the neighborhood show might be even bigger oh hi pete hey good morning kate you know it is ironic that what's usually seen as a celebration of independence feels more like a protest against the government this year yeah i, I heard it's a psyop by the police targeting black and brown communities to promote sleep deprivation and desensitize everyone to the sound. I saw that on Twitter too. And the firemen are following around the cops so they know where the fires start. Who knows? Nothing would surprise me right now. Oh, all the professional firework displays got canceled. So the big stuff is easy to get this year. And no one is calling the cops on their neighbors. That's all. So it's not always like this. Not even close. Certainly not 24-7 like it has been. <laughs> Think about all the poor dogs. Poor everyone. I keep thinking about all the people whose anxiety is even higher than normal because of the protests and the pandemic. How horrible this must be for them. Even if it were only happening at night and they give us a break during the day, that would help. Oh, it's like scary to hear the sounds and not see the pretty lights. Exactly. Oh, everybody be careful out there, please. Uh, so we got a delivery of disposable masks. Finally, I put them by the front door if anyone needs. I'm sorry again about the morning treats. Lou must have had a prior engagement today, but there are some protein bars and I think there's a few of those Enemans coffee cakes left in the kitchen. Help yourselves. Oh, and I got some really good coffee delivered, too. There's a pot in the kitchen and some small bags for your room. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, if that's supposed to be a desensitizing operation. It isn't working. I jump every time. I'll say something about it on my channel today. You know, maybe that will help. Oh, yes. Use your platform for good. Right? Hmm? Uh, Sh Shauna, can we stay on for a second after? Uh, um, Janora, you have a sec, too? Sure. Of course, darling. Everybody else, try and have a nice, calm Independence Day. Zoom if you need me. I'm available, except at six for my audition. Okay, I will see you all tonight. Let's, we're going to have something busy to celebrate. Okay, bye. Good luck. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, I'm headed out to break a leg, babe. I'll check in later. Um, so have either of you seen Lou? Uh, I, I texted him yesterday, but he hasn't responded. I'll find him later. We're supposed to have our weekly hang today. Oh, thank you, dear. So um, thanks for staying on. Oh, Clint, before I forget, can you get any more of that tangerine hand soap? Everybody loves it. Yeah, about that. Uh, what happens? I, I've been suspended from work. Oh, no. Was this about the COVID man skit? Oh, Clint, comedy is so hard. I wish you'd come to me first. No, it's not that, but but comedy is hard. Okay, if this has anything to do with my story, I can help you find a lawyer. No, it, uh, it's, no, the official reason is on suspicion of theft. Excuse me? You know all the stuff I've been bringing in from the warehouse, the, the disinfecting wipes and the toilet paper and- You weren't stealing those things, were you? No, no, see, we have a room at the warehouse called the dungeon. 
no, it, it, it's where we put all, all the damaged goods and the stuff that, that's expired or discontinued or whatever. We mark it out in inventory and then put it in the dungeon and people just go in there and pretty much take whatever they want. Okay, so what's the problem? It's not official. So now HR says they have video of me running stolen goods to my car. But you weren't. No, I mean, right. I mean, I, I took things, but I, I didn't steal anything. No one steals anything from the dungeon. It has no value. Okay, this sounds like a clear case of retaliation, but hard to prove. And it, it gets more complicated. What do you mean? Ever since the story aired, I, I've been taking more stuff out of the dungeon and bringing it to local charities. But independently, I never got approval. You have receipts? No, just many thanks and a warm feeling inside. That won't hold up in arbitration. Janora, I fucked up. Fudged up, sorry. You told me not to do this, but I, I... I told Deb. She's the only one I told and she threw me under the bus. Stabbed in the back. Ugh, despicable. This whole thing went to my head. I really thought I was making a difference. So, so I, I've been suspended without pay pending further investigation. Can they do that? They can do that. They are doing it. Oh, Clint, I'm so sorry this happened. If there's anything at all I can do. Actually, I'd love to stay on here till things get worked out, even though I'm, I'm not so essential at the moment. Oh, you stay as long as you need. And maybe a little extension on the rent? What now? Or rent forgiveness? <laughs> of course, darling. Don't worry about a thing. Thanks, Shauna. I really appreciate it. And, and thank you, Janora. We did some good work. I'm sorry this happened. Man, I, I, I thought I was Bruce Springsteen. I'm not even Bruce... What's his name? Bruce, that Bruce that was on Hollywood Squares? Bruce Valanche. Yeah, him. Hang in there, Clint. It's not over. Thanks. Okay, I, I'm gonna go see if I can find Lou. Happy fourth. Bye. Oh, that poor thing. I wish there was something we could do. You know, I've always wanted to work with Bruce Valanche. Jackson, what's going on? Is it Millie? Yes, she's at the hospital. Your hospital. Oh, Jackson. They have COVID. It got worse, just like you said it would. She got short of breath, and when she went in, her, her, her pulse ox was uh, uh, 85. Well, what have you heard so far? Have you spoken to any of the doctors? Well, my son did. Uh, she's in, in the ICU. Oh, well, that's good. I, I mean, it's good that she got a bed. They must have opened more up. The ICU nurses are great, Jackson. They really know what they're doing. She's in good hands. They need you to check on her, please. I work in ER, Jackson. Well, that's why I reached out to you. Well, ICU is different. I'm not assigned to that unit. Well, so what? So I can't just go there. Yes, you can. No, I can't. There are strict protocols, strict protocols in place. I could get suspended or worse if I get caught there. I tried to get to the hospital. They turned me away. Nobody knew anything. She's <laughs> Jackson, Jackson, listen to me. Jackson, 
I will find out what I can, okay? Okay. In the meantime, you keep breathing. Okay. And keep the faith, right? I'm praying too. Thank you, Kate. Seriously, Josh is going to be in college before you get to the point. Spit it out. Okay, you're right. I don't want the anchor position. I don't want to blow your life up again, but- Then don't. Steph, please. I thought I should want to be an anchor, but I love field reporting. I, I love investigative reporting. It's where I, I can really make a difference. Like the Everest story or the VA, or even being able to put a spotlight on, on police misconduct. I mean, couldn't my career be enough just as it is? Why didn't you say something before this? Jesus, Janora. I know. Look, I tried. And, and then I, I thought that I could just figure it out. Plus, you are already in Atlanta. And, and then there's your parents. And, you know, I figured I could just suck it up. But I am miserable just thinking about it. And I want to talk this over with you, but you're, you're always so busy. I'm all the way out here raising our son alone. Yeah, I'm pretty busy. No, I didn't. That's not what I meant. This was only supposed to be a month and not four. I am emotionally and physically exhausted. I hate it here. My parents won't take the virus seriously enough to mask up, so I can't allow them in my own house to see their grandson. But I still have to do all their shopping and take care of them. The country still thinks it's okay to kill black people. And my wife is halfway across the country leaping in front of scary shit with a camera. So yeah, I'm busy and I'm freaked out and I have absolutely no peace for the yet. Look, I understand. One thing I can guarantee you, Nora, is that you absolutely have no idea. You 100% do not understand, and you never could. I just, I am so frustrated all the time. I can barely think I am so mad these days. I hear you, I do. I... <clears throat> Can we just start this whole thing over? No, I don't. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Reset. So, I hear your wife's a little flaky. And your wife's acting like a crazy woman. Oh, hey, now, under absolutely no circumstances, can you badmouth my wife? I'm sorry I made it sound like you were part of Josh's life and mine. You've been great. I mean, parenting over Zoom is not easy. No, and reading a bedtime story every night is not the same as being with him night and day. I know that most of this has fallen on you. And I am so sorry that it has been so hard on you. I hate feeling like I am missing 
everything in his life. I, I know this is not what either of us expected. I gotta go. Listen, do what you think is right, okay? We'll figure it out. Hey, Shauna, sorry to bother you. Have you seen Lou? He's not answering my texts. Maybe he's gone out. I think we're out of light bulbs and sugar. His van's in the driveway. Oh, have you tried knocking on his door? Maybe he's sleeping in. I think the fireworks and whatnot have been keeping him up at night, poor thing. I'll try that. Oh, I can go get the light bulbs and sugar. I'm heading out to Vaughn's anyway. Oh, thank you. I will Venmo you and you'll keep me posted. Oh, of course. Bye. Babe, where are you? I went for a run. A long one. I needed to clear my head. Mr. Gold just called, oh, and he Mr. said- Gold, I am that... so sick of Mr. Gold. But he's been helping me a lot. I mean, the song, the Sondheim show, and now, today, I'm waiting to hear if he can get me this really big audition. He's a liar, Sean. He's manipulated you. Shit, he's manipulated me. And I bought into it because I loved you. Love. Did you know we could have flown back to Canada two months ago? He's been so diligent, staying on top of all of our travel plans. He's lied to us. It's time for us to get out of here. But... Sean, I really need you to, to listen to me right now. You are turning into someone that I don't recognize. But deep down, I still know who you really are. <sighs> One, the fact that when you laugh, you, you make yourself actually lose your breath. Oh, Two, babe, this is it. when you sing, all the rest of the noise of the world just, just drops away. Just Three, when I hold your hand, I can feel your heartbeat all the way down in my toes. Okay, what are you? Uh, six things, Sean. Six things. Jackson says that when something goes wrong in a relationship, you're supposed to think of six things that remind you that you love the other person. Wrong. Something is wrong, Sean. Really wrong. But four, the way that you talk in your sleep in elementary school French. Oh, babe. Five, the fact that I know better than anyone that you have the biggest heart of anyone I've ever known. Babe. And six, you are the unsolvable variable that I don't want to solve because you're magic and magic just, it is. It's something to be in awe of. It's not meant to be solved. It, I love you, Sean. You, not the Mr. Gold tainted Sean Mendez, the real Sean Mendez, my Sean Mendez. Sean, are you even listening to me? Uh, babe, it's Mr. Gold. I think this is it. I I'll call you right back. Leather Daddy is an excellent name for your beard bomb. It's so funny. Wait, do you know why it's funny? It's funny. Well, if you promise to give me a five-star review, I'll send some over. So yeah, I think Sean will be the perfect influencer from my para line. Sure. I mean, not that I don't want the gig, but 
Everybody's looking for people of color these days. Isn't he a color? All right. Yes. No. Wait. Maybe? Part. Ah, I don't know. He's got to be BIPOC or TRIPOC or some damn thing. Yeah, and he's LGBTUV or whatever, so it's like a bonus. Exactly. It's so stupid anyway. I mean, like, why are they all acting so crazy? It shouldn't matter. I Me mean, personally, I don't even see color. Me neither. I mean, I don't care if you're black, white, or purple. I mean, as long as you get the job done. Exactly. People are people. I mean, I don't believe in that white privilege crap either. What even is white privilege? I've never seen it. And I'm gay, so I know what it's like to be a minority. All right. It's so much more worse for women historically. Well, I mean, you do have it rough now with all that Karen stuff going on. Oh my God, right? Like, I can't even send a cup of coffee back without someone trying to film me. Crazy times. And I marched and everything. Ugh. Sucks. Really? I mean, I sent clients out to represent. I mean, I thought it was important that they be seen representing. Well, I hope they posted pictures. Obviously. I mean, that's the thing about these influencers. If it's not on Insta, it doesn't happen. I mean, when I was a kid, there was no such thing. Bummer. I would have been a great influencer. People do listen to the opinions of rich people. Like Ivanka or mm -hmm. Paris Hilton or Beyonce. I mean, oh, people will do anything Beyonce says. Oh, and she's black too. Yeah, but she's very well-spoken though. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I was just talking about this to some kid who was trying to sell water outside my gym. I totally joking asked this your permit. She like <laughs> freaked out and started yelling at me. I'm like, um, you know, if you just wouldn't be so loud, you might get a little further in life. You're lucky you weren't on the news. Oh yeah, I always make sure nobody is filming me before something like that. Smart. Okay, so about Chan, let's mm -hmm. say 5% commission per sale via his link, plus a CPM of 10,000 per month. 20%, 7,500 CPM, and he doesn't actually have to use the product. 15 and eight, and he has to use it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so nice talking to you, Renee. I mean, it's nice to see that we have so much in common. God, I have to say you are so much more woke than your sister. Right? <laughs> I'm really sorry about all that though. Well, I, who cares? I always land on my feet. And I mean, it was really great talking to you though. It's so hard to find other socially conscious people nowadays. Hi, Jensen. Janora, Hi. how's Chuck? We sent a muffin basket. He's recovering okay? Oh, yeah, he's- And uh, how are you? I'm- And your wife? Good. And channel three? Oh, she's good. Ha! I sometimes feel like my station's a person too. <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, Jensen, I spoke to Robert a few days ago. Rob Robertson, he's doing a bang up job filling in for you. He is. Yeah. <laughs> and he is popular with the viewers. So I was really surprised to hear that you didn't even offer him the position. When Kelly Lynn told me that she was leaving, I wanted to fill the position with another female and we didn't really have anyone here ready to go. Would you have offered Rob the position if you were female? Would it make it easier on you if I told you I didn't even want the position? What? I'm pulling my contract. Are you kidding me? I thought you wanted the desk. I thought so too. Oh, I don't know how they're going to react. Janora? You do not want a reputation for being difficult. I've been called a lot worse. Rob is the right fit and not just for the optics. Agreed. But the boys upstairs, it's, oh, it's gonna rock the boat around here. 
well, you know, something tells me that that is a boat that needs some rocking. <laughs> and you might just enjoy being the one to do it. You do have great instincts, you, but you always have. So do you. Look, you already know this is the right thing to do. Plus, Jensen, I have seen you talk a whole lot of people into a whole lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do have a gift. Come on, you're gonna kill it, babe. I'm not even concerned. Why would you be concerned? No, I'm not concerned. Oh, so you're not concerned, so everything's fine. Why are you being so spicy today? Ew, I hate that, don't say that. Okay, okay. Where are you? You told me to clear out. I came to the old house to pick up some stuff. Which old house? Hancock Park. Huh. What? I, it sounds fun. <laughs> uh, what, what's her name, P there? Uh, uh, Brittany? Tiffany? Gwen, you know her name is Gwen, and I don't know, maybe. I see. What? Are you mad? Oh, honey, I could care less. <laughs> Give my best to Tiffany. Gwen? There have been so many of them, I lose track. Three, I have three ex-wives, and none of them are named Tiffany. Was there something that you needed, or are you just calling to rub your ex-wives in my face? Okay, babe, it is perfectly okay to be nervous. I, I don't mean, this get is... nervous. Oh, well, you sound a little uh, Ew, like... Don't you dare. Okay, okay, okay. Babe, you're trying to pick a fight with me, and, and that's okay, whatever you need. But I want to be very clear. I am going to the house to pick up some stuff because I'm staying with you. Gwen is my ex-wife. Ex. Just like Shelly and... Tiffany. Andy. Andy. Andy was the first. Who, if you recall, I met after you dumped me in Kabul. Three ex-wives. Wow. Come on, babe. Don't do this. Do what? Shauna, aren't you getting tired of this? Every time things are going good between us, you get nervous. I don't get you, nervous. You pick a fight, and then we stop talking. And then you marry a Tiffany. And why haven't you married any Tiffany's? Hmm? Huh? I mean, you have a line of men behind you like baby ducks. Why haven't you married anybody? Nobody ever asked. No, I asked. We were 17! Okay, okay, listen, babe, I'm not gonna let you suck me into another fight. It is just an audition. I mean, you've done thousands, right? So just call me when it's done. If you wanna keep fighting, we can, or we can have that brie and pinot for dinner and finish watching Glow. I mean, completely up to you. Listen to me, I love you, Silverman. So get your shit together.
Jackson. <laughs> Can you take a deep breath for me? Honey, I know. Just take a deep breath. Another one, please. Tell me what happened. Jackson, you don't need to hear all of the details. All of it. I need to hear it. Okay. Right now, she's stable. Mm -hmm. I transported a patient up to her unit. I knew one of the nurses in Millie's room, so I went in. Her respirations were getting worse and the doctor wanted to intubate. Then her heart rate dropped and then it stopped. But the nurses gave her CPR. They shocked her heart. They gave her the medications to get her pulses back. Jackson, they got her back. <laughs> then they intubated her as they were planning to do. And now she is sedated and on ventilation. My beautiful wife needed chest compressions. Needed her heart shocked, needed to have a tube in her throat, and I wasn't there. I was there for you, Jackson. I need to see her. I need to hold her. I should have busted down the Jackson, damn just, door. Jackson, take a moment and just <laughs> let this sink in. She's stable. <laughs> What's the probability she'll come off of that ventilator? I've been reading the news, Kate. I know it's not good. I know, Jackson, you are not wrong to worry, but Millie is not some number in a news ticker. She will fight and you will fight for her. It's not going to be easy, but what's worth it never is. Was she? I don't know how awake she was for it, but I know she wasn't in any pain. I stayed up there long enough to make sure she was stabilized. And then I had to run back down to the ER. I told her not to go out there to those protests. She was just being true to herself. Always is. <laughs> If there was ever a time to keep the faith, Jackson, this is it. Right. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. I am thrilled that you all responded so positively to this project. I'm really looking Donna, forward to it. I haven't let them in yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> Should you call me Eddie? Oh, I, I thought you said that the network people- Don't patronize me, Silverman. I'm in no mood. Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. <laughs> I'm running a major studio for my dining room. There's not enough Chardonnay in Brentwood, and my darling niece, Renee, has taken over my pool house, which now smells like dirty hippie. Why wouldn't I be okay? I see. I'm not even going to ask what happened. Oh, that's probably best. Oh, the fuck. Oh, trust me, honey, I know. <sighs> uh, okay, let's go. Or we could talk for a moment. Get your game face back on. My game face is always on. Are you really going to wear that? Okay, I'm going to let them in. And we're going to take it from the top of Act 3, Crash and Zinnia. Wonderful. Uh, let me just... Um, not off book? Well, you asked me to prepare pages from Act 4, but that's fine. Okay, I just needed to see which scene. I'm ready anytime. Thank you. Okay. 
We're recording. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm sure you all know Shauna Silverman. Hi, everybody. Oh, it's so lovely to see Mute, you. Mute, please. This is the network test for the role of Zinnia Stein in Lilac Cove. Okay, let's go. Crash says, Zinnia, you didn't just break my heart, you broke my spirit. Oh, I never meant to do that. I only meant to leave. Um, the, uh, the ranch in Wyoming was your dream, not mine. My dream was you, it was always you. Well, dreams have a funny way of going dark, Crash. I didn't want that for us. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm sorry, is this audition distracting you from your phone? Uh, my apologies, you have my full focus. <clears throat> Dreams have a funny way of going dark. I didn't want that for us. I wanted you to have better memories of me. Damn it, Zinnia, I don't want memories, I want you. You want the dream of me. Look at me, I'm not young anymore. I'm not beautiful, mm. not, not like before. <laughs> I'm simply me, and I'm scared that that's not going to be enough for you. Mm. I'm so sorry. Can you excuse me for just a quick second? Are you texting? Apologies, everybody. There's a tiny little problem here at the end. I just, uh, I just need. You are embarrassing me. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. You were saying? No, you were saying it's still your line. You want the dream of me. Look at me. I'm not young anymore. I'm not beautiful. Not like before. I'm simply me. And I'm so scared that that is not going to be enough for you, Crash. But it's enough for me. For the first time. That is a powerful place to be. This is ridiculous. I thought you were a pro. What are your priorities, Silverman? My priorities. Uh, Edna, gentlemen, let me just say this, if I may. We play our Juliets so we can earn our Lady Macbeths. I am grateful to Cricket. I owe her everything, but I'm ready to move on. Lilac Cove is a great script, and I am Zinnia Stein. I will act the hell out of this for you. You know I will, but I have to go. Thank you for this opportunity. Silverman. Oh, <laughs> that's a new one for the books, huh, guys? <laughs> I am so sorry to have wasted your time. I said, give me a second. Shauna, did you get him back? He's not picking up. It, okay, it's I'm bad. I just had to get off that call. Oh shit, your audition. Lou? Hey. Lou, honey, I'm right here. Lou, the door's locked. Should I call a locksmith, an ambulance? Lou? Lou? Lou, honey, it's Sean, I'm right here. Come on. Can you hear me? Right here, sweetie. Lou? Lou? Lou, stay with me. Come on, honey, open the door.
Sing to 